hello uh, so today's video comes to you from a smallest little enclosure which we've been in before when we did the pumpkin video and I'm joined by beautiful Eve and behind me we've also got Harlow who's the grey girl and Cody who is our rooster and this is really very relevant for today's video because today's video is about one of the education programs we will be running at the Hen Haven and the reason I'm starting with this one, it's not because it's the most important, it's because it's the one that I've planned out most already. So, and it's probably the most relevant to what we are contacted about, or should I say who we are contacted about, which who are roosters. So at the moment we're averaging about three emails a day about unwanted roosters or roosters that have been dumped, uh, which is really sad because we can't take them. At the moment we have got Cody, who's right at the back there, and he today had a very big and exciting day, which is that he found his crow. So today was the first day that he crowed. When I was doing the other girls this morning, I heard him crowing. And at the moment, it's a very inoffensive sound. It's very deep, it's very sing-song, um, and he hasn't done it all day. So if it just remained that, we would not have an issue with the neighbors. He is no problem at all. Unfortunately, from experience, we know that that does not stay the case for long. I'm really worried about finding a home for them because they are special needs chickens just from their breed. So they're going to need a lot of special care. And I, in Hen Haven, I will keep chickens like this. I will not rehome them. And they have to stay together because they're really good friends. So why is this relevant? Well, the education program we're going to be focusing on is bringing an end to hatching projects in schools and preschools. And the reason we want to start with that is because I see it as low hanging fruit. I also see that whilst it might not seem like, oh, it's not as bad as slaughtering animals, it's not as bad as this and that. The fact is it teaches a lesson to children that chickens are disposable and the animals aren't really worth any respect or thought. I think that by offering an alternative, not only do we save these chicks from coming into existence and then being dumped or killed, but we also have a chance to give a message to, of kindness towards animals so i think it's actually quite important and it's also going to the root of the issue about all these emails about roosters that we receive now not all of them are hatching project related but i would say 70 75 percent of them are um at the moment charlotte one of our foster carers is caring for who i'm calling our little chick kindergarten and she has got at least two roosters out of the three that we'll be trying to find a home for together they're gorgeous but it's an issue because we're all based in suburbia right now so i mean i want to be celebrating Cody's crowing today but it's also it, it's difficult as well so um anyway let me dive into telling you a bit about the education program uh, which will be one of many and what it will the first step is to contact preschools or schools and identify who is going who, who does hatching projects we either want schools to pledge never to do them if they haven't done them before or we want preschools and schools that currently do them to look at why they're not a good idea and then choose an alternative that teaches kindness instead so the reason that we need the hen haven for this is because if we're contacting schools that already have hatching programs we need to be able to step in to save the individuals who are already there so at the moment we can't do that because they're going to be about half roosters what happens with hatching projects as you may know is that the school gets incubated eggs there's no mother hen there they're in a factory farm um, the incubated eggs hatch in the school the, the children all do an r over them um, maybe handle them maybe being rougher than they think they're being and then they either get sent back where the chicks are either killed or put back into the factory farm system or um, they're palmed off to parents who often haven't thought things through but they just think the chicks are adorable they don't think about the crowing that they're not allowed to have in their council area and the heartbreak that will come when they either just try and rehome the rooster who's bonded to the hens by this point or even the heartbreak of their own children who love the chickens at that point and then they're being either dumped in the bush or even if they're given to a sanctuary now the sanctuaries are bursting at the seam, so it's not as easy as just saying, oh, I'll just you know, give the roosters to a sanctuary. They are so, so full of roosters. And if you think of how many emails I get, and we're quite clearly a hen rescue based in suburbia, you can imagine how many um, rooster emails the bigger sanctuaries get. So it's a really tough situation, which is why education is so important. 
I think with council will be really easy to get on board because their rangers are wasting a lot of time um, dealing with dumped roosters and trying to, not because they care about the animals, but because of noise complaints. So what will our education program involve? So the first step is a place for the chicks to go, uh, where they can be looked after and given the care they need. Hello, Cody coming up and Eve behind me. <laughs> Hello, darling. Oh, they're so gorgeous. He's looking at me now. He's just off the screen. And I'm getting my back preened by Eve. <laughs> and Harlow's having a lovely lie down over there. Um, so, th and then because we will have limited space still, the, a careful, a very careful rehoming program, but the fact that we won't have that rush to rehome the roosters like we would now because our neighbours just would complain. Hi, darling. We're talking about roosters like you. Handsome boys. And Eve's got so much to say behind me. <laughs> so that's the first thing. The second thing is providing the education to the childcare centre about why these projects are dangerous, not just for animals, but for children too. So we want to be able to approach them on the level that they can understand. This is a dangerous lesson to show that animals are disposable, which is just not the case and it, it shouldn't be something we're teaching. Um, now, the thing is, even if the people agree with us, they may think, well, what are we meant to do instead? So we're going to give them some options there. So the first thing is the option of an incursion. So us coming to the preschool or the school, especially if they're young, too young for a day trip, or then I think that it would be best for a volunteer or for myself to go. Um, and what would happen there is we would develop a lovely story and we'd have some beautiful chicken puppets and we would act out a story for the children uh, which covers the feelings of chickens. So obviously they're very young, so we can't go hard on certain animal rights messages, but we can definitely instill the values of kindness towards animals and the fact that chickens have feelings and the bond between the mother and the chicks. So I've got a lovely one of my foster carers, Elin, who is going to be helping me with that and coming up with the story. And we're going to then have, they, they do these model kit uh, I've already got one actually, I should have brought this out to show you, I will in a future video. Um, it's a, a set and it has 28 eggs, which is the gestation period of an egg to hatch. And if you open that, it's like plastic, unfortunately, it'd be nice if it was reusable or like, you know, something that wasn't plastic, but um, this is all to be worked on. So if you have other ideas and then it opens up and inside is a picture of the development of the egg at that stage. So I thought we could have the children all sitting around and they each get given one. Um, if there's not 28 in the class, then we just choose ones from beginning to end, miss out a few steps and they open them up and we see what's, what it says inside. And at the end, there's a little chick inside, a little fluffy chick. Um, so the story is about, so they still get the hatching process. We could also, depending on, we want to keep it short for preschoolers, longer for slightly older kids. Um, so if they're older, we might include a video in, which actually shows a chick hatching so they get some of the idea about what really happens. For the young ones, we'll have a colouring sheet for them to take home, which will have some extra resources. So as well as getting a, a hen, um, one of the characters from the story to colour in at home, there'll be some links on there. For example, a link to uh, Farm Sanctuary has... It, there's there's live webcams the whole time at Farm Sanctuary, including in their chicken barn and their turkey barn. So the kids can, even though it's opposite time zones, if you go in the evening or the morning onto the computer, the kids can watch what's going on in a sanctuary and get that and see the animals. And even at night, you can see them all snoozing. Um, so that would be a really lovely thing. And then just giving them some other resources, with their parents some resources to do with them. Uh, to encourage that research into why it's so important to be kind to animals. Now, the other set, the other step for um, the would be the an excursion. So, for slightly older children who are in a place where it's okay for them to go in a group to uh, to another location with a teacher, so or parents supervising, and that would be where they would come to the hen haven. Now, if any of the animals are not suitable to be around children or if it stresses them out too much, 
then they that enclosure would not be open to them but the idea would be to come and spend time gently and to be taught some gentle um ways to be with the animals and to sit and let them come to you so i think that that would be a really nice alternative way way better than hatching projects and the idea would be that each school or preschool would sign a pledge that they will never take part in hatching projects and we end up with a petition that we can then with all of the schools on there where eventually we can take that and i'm hoping to work in conjunction with the animal justice party to actually make this a legal thing to make it so that these things cannot continue now we'll be starting really small so once we have our area we don't know where we'll be yet let's say it was lake macquarie um, so if we were in Lake Macquarie, my first step would be for all of the schools and preschools in Lake Macquarie to sign the pledge. I would start going myself and with maybe a couple of volunteers. Now, if that was successful and once we've tweaked it, uh, maybe worked with some people who know a bit more about education, we've got some great contacts with primary school teachers who are very much more knowledgeable than me about what children respond to and what's okay and what's not okay. Um, and... There's a, there's a wonderful group as well. I think it's called Think, and it's particularly aimed at advocacy for children. I'd love to work in conjunction with them so we can make it a really good, solid plan. Um, it's not meant to be controversial. It's, it's, it's meant to be about instilling kindness um, towards animals and chickens in particular. So then it would be about getting, but once that's set up and we've got that format, I would be applying for grants to get the kit and the puppets and the other things that we need to kind of make it a wider thing around New South Wales and the aim to be um, putting, bringing an end to hatching projects in New South Wales and then Australia. Uh, so yes, it's a fairly long-term plan, but it's something that I know a lot of people are enthusiastic about. A lot of people have found themselves to be in uh, with their children in preschools or schools and they have to deal with this. I mean, lentil, our beautiful lentil, she's from a hatching project and she I'll, I'll do a, another video with her in in her enclosure she has a different enclosure with some friends because she could get picked on by the other girls she has one leg she was rescued when a friend of mine went to pick up her daughter from school and they were about to kill lentil because she'd been born with a backwards leg and she couldn't really hop but that actually already killed her friend but my friend was like no, no i'll take her i'll take her so she did, she didn't have anywhere to put her. She contacted me and I brought Lentil into my family. Um, Lentil had a leg amputation, her other leg is fine. And she now hops around everywhere. She has an implant, so she doesn't have the stress of laying eggs, which for her is really stressful. And she just does brilliantly. She's very cuddly, especially when she was a baby. She's so cuddly. She's got some chicken friends now. Uh, and she lives the most wonderful life and she's probably gonna live with us for many, many years. So. Um, well, she'll live with us for her whole life, but I think she's going to have a very long life. So she's an example of where hatching projects go wrong. The incubator doesn't do as good a job as a mother hen. A mother hen, and this is one of the things we'll share with the children, a mother hen will actually talk to her chick when the chick is inside the egg. They'll begin clucking to the chick, moving the eggs around. She knows what to do. Um, an incubator is programmed to do what it does, but it does not always do it like a mother hen would. You end up with more deformities of chicks and those chicks are killed. Schools and preschools do not have budget for vet bills. And this is something that's come up when schools and preschools have wanted to adopt ex battery hens. I understand what they're trying to do. And it is, it's, um, it is commendable to want to show the children what the ex battery hens have been through and then to help them recover. Uh, but the reason we don't usually approve those homes is because there simply isn't a vet bill budget in preschools and schools. So unless a staff member is willing to step up and be the guardian for those chickens, but have them live mainly at the school, but they take them home at holidays and everything like that, and to step up if vet bills needed, we can't usually approve those homes. So the same goes if, if a school is not comfortable sending chicks back who are sick and they'll definitely be killed by the um, company, but they don't have the vet bill fund to to care for them themselves so i see this as a project that will work in conjunction with council in conjunction with preschools and parents um and just not only bringing an end hopefully to dumped and surrendered roosters or at least making them a lot less 
but also giving children from a very young age that first first step into kindness towards animals. I mean, they're born with it. Um, most children, whilst they may be a bit rough, they might not realise to be very gentle to start with, but we can teach them that. But they are naturally kind to animals. And it's only when parents and society starts to squeeze that out of them uh, at a very young age that they lose it. But if we if we get in there and, and show how wonderful it is to care for animals and, and how much the animals deserve that, then I think the children will love it. Um, and it might be the first of a series of education programs that gets more in depth as the children get older. So that's what we'd be doing at the, at the very, very young age. And in future videos, I will be sharing with you some ideas for what we'll do for uh, people who are in older years of primary school and then high school as well as hopefully connecting with some university students. So those are things that will obviously be a lot more, um, I guess, in depth about veganism and animal rights, as opposed to this, which is really just like, be kind to animals, that is the message. So that's the first education program that I'll be excited to do. Now, obviously that will happen after the Henhaven set up. It would be too much to try to put all of that out there whilst also trying to move the animals, get enclosures set up. But I think that it's, good to keep these things in mind because whenever we hear these awful things that happen to animals we have to think well how can we stop that as well as providing shelter to the ones who need it so yeah so that's today's video um we have got the beauties who are having a little bit of a lie down in the back we've got eva at the very back cody having a sit down and then harlow yes i'm talking about you gorgeous oh they're so sweet i love them so much i really don't want to rehome them <laughs> Anyway, thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you tomorrow.